All right, let's add the water mesh. So create another plane, scale it up by a lot, and just move it wherever you want the leg to be. Okay, this is going to be our leg. And control A to apply all the transform. And I'm going to subdivide this by a bunch of times. I need a lot of geometry. Subdivide once more and maybe once more. Okay, that's enough. Now I'm going to uh, generate the depth information for the water. So I'm going to create another geometry node. Drop in the render mesh, not the generator. Because uh, if I drop in the generator, then uh, the whole generator is going to rerun, which will cost some time. So yeah, the, the render mesh will do. And uh, I'm going to use a uh, ray cast node. And I'm going to ray cast downward using this vector. And just increase this a little, like so. And create a math node, use multiply. And multiply this head output with the head distance. And I'm going to store this as a named attribute. And this will be our depth. There we go. All right, let's create the water material. There we go. Go back to shader editor and get rid of this. Create a uh, volume absorption and a volume scatter. And add shader and add these together. And create an RGB node and set the color for our volume shaders. Next, we create a value node and set the density for our two volume shaders. And uh, for the density, let's set this to uh, 0 0.07 for now. And let's see, maybe 0.5, yeah. All right, for the surface, let's create a uh, glass material and a transparent material. And we're going to mix these together and connect this to the output. And next, we create a light path node. Now, we're going to multiply the camera ray with the depth input. There we go. And use this as the mix factor, like so. Now we need to set some roughness for the uh, uh, the water. Yeah, this looks all right. Now just set some bump for the uh, water. So I'm going to create a noise texture and uh, use the position as the vector. I mean the texture coordinate, and create a bump. Connect this to the height and the normal to the normal. All right. I need to set this to uh, something bigger. All right. And increase the details to something very high. Yeah, that's all right. All right, let's have a look at the uh, masking. I think it's a little too sharp, so I'm going to manipulate the uh, mask a little. I'm going to divide this by some values like that and uh, I'm gonna clamp away some values all right let's see it looks pretty good I'm going to lower the density of the uh, material I mean the, the uh, volume materials all right that looks okay all right, let's just leave the water as is. If we have the time, we will come back and tweak the water later. But for now, let's get back to the landscape. I need to uh, generate a uh, shore for the lake because right now the grass is kind of growing under the water, which is wrong. So I'm going to drop the water mesh in. By the way, I actually renamed the uh, plane to water All right, and use relative. Move this back a little and I'm gonna raycast again but this time raycast upward instead of downward and also 
I'm going to create a uh, geometry proximity node. All right, something like that. And uh, create a Boolean math and use not. Basically, I'm going to invert this hit value like that. And finally, I'm going to multiply this value with this distance. I'm going to store this as the shore. Let me go back to the shader editor and uh, it's about time we work on the shader. Create a uh, data node. We're gonna use the uh, normalized debris channel to uh, control the colors. So I'm gonna use a four color mix node and uh, mix the four colors based on this debris, I mean the normalized debris. And, uh, Let's say we have some sand here at the point where we don't have a lot of debris and uh, we have some more debris. This part will be some short grass and if we have even more debris, I mean dirt, we will have some even more thicker grass and uh, maybe for a lot of debris, let's just uh, use a dirt color like this. All right, and uh, we can adjust the position of these keys like that. And let's connect this to the base color of the dirt. Now we still have the problem where we have the uh, grass growing underneath the water, which is wrong. So I'm going to use the uh, shore attribute. It's like this. Let's create a map range node and let's select the shore like that and flip the value to 0, 1 like so. Alright, we have some very nice shores here. But as you can see, we have a perfectly uh, leveled kind of shore, which is uh, pretty bad. So I'm going to break up the shore somehow. Create a noise texture using the uh, position texture coordinate like that and uh, let's visualize the noise it's a little too small so I need it to be bigger something like this and uh, increase the details a little maybe like that and uh, next subtract 0 0.5 and uh, multiply by a certain multiplier and finally we add this value to this shore value and let's see the shore and here we can uh, configure the uh, multiplier here to control the breakup of the shore. Now I think uh, the noise is still a little too small, so I'm going to uh, increase it, increase the size a bit like that. And uh, this value is a little too strong, maybe something like that. All right. Next, let me just see the water channel. So we still have a little bit of water running around the landscape and we're going to use this water to also remove the grass. So I'm going to combine this water and this shoreline here using a maximum node. All right, and this will be our sand map. So I'm going to use a two color mix node and I'm going to use this as the map. And for the first color, I'm going to use this whole group here. And for the sand color, I'm going to use the same sand color here. All right. And uh, let me just tweak this values here. And uh, let's connect it to the uh, principal, I mean the dirt material. And let's take a look. It's pretty nice. Now, I think the sand is a little too bright. So I'm going to uh, lower the uh, brightness of the sand. Maybe create a uh, an RGB node and copy this value, I mean the color in. And use this same RGB node for both mixed color nodes here. Maybe something like that. 
All right. Anyway, we can go back here and tweak later on. It's not a big deal, really. Copy this data node. Let's just use the flow channel to indicate some more green grass. So I'm going to create another two color mix node and I'm going to use the uh, flow to mix the colors. And I want more grass to grow where the flow is. So I'm going to reuse this color like so. But uh, now we have the problem where the grass kind of run under the water, which means we need to uh, swap the position here. As you can see, the water, I mean the flow kind of run here, which means we have more water going around here. And so a lot more grass is going to grow here. All right? But at this shore here, we only have sand, so we don't have grass growing anywhere near the water. Now this color is nice and all, but uh, right now we don't take the slope angle into consideration. So you can see we have uh, like uh, some grass growing on a very steep kind of slope. And we don't want that. We want some uh, uh, slope information in our texture. Basically, the the part where the slope is a little too steep, there shouldn't be any plant growing here. It should be only dirt and uh, broken rocks and, and stuff. So I'm going to search for the slope info node. And uh, I'm going to use a three color mix node. And I'm going to use the normalized slope as the masking. For the lower slope, we have uh, this grass kind of texture like that. And for medium slope, we have some dirt like that. And for high slope, let's set this to sand. And it looks pretty good. And it only uses just a few nodes. And uh, you can actually make it even more complicated by using textures for these solid colors. But uh, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to keep it simple and use solid colors only. So next, let's just uh, create some textures for the rocks. First, let's uh, use the uh, landscape data and let's take a look at the convexity. Basically, this is the detail map. So I'm going to use a three color mix node again and use this convexity as the map. Let me just uh, set the color for the rocks. Something like that. All right, for the concave area, we're going to use a dark color. And for the convex area, we're going to use a slightly brighter color, like that. And we're going to use this for the rock material. And uh, we also want some dirt in the cracks of the rock. So we're going to be using the flow map again, this flow map. And uh, we're going to use a uh, two color mix node. But this time, instead of uh, mixing with a solid color, I'm going to add a uh, mixed color here. And uh, I'm going to mix this uh, rock color with the dirt color, something like that. And I'm going to use this as the color 2. And I'm going to use the flow map to mix between these. But uh, I don't think we have a lot of flow to begin with. So this might be not visible in the end result. Yeah, it's not visible, but uh, let's just leave it there in case we want to change the landscape and the flow will reveal itself. All right, now let's add some more details to the rock. Let's search for the fractal chips. There we go. And we will again use the position texture coordinate. And let me see the chips. Drop a vector math node, use multiply. This will be, let's say, 0.5 for the Z, so that we kind of stretch the um, texture coordinate a little along the Z dimension. Let's play a little with the uh, scale of the uh, fractal chip and uh, increase the level all the way to 5. It's going to render a little slower, but it's going to add a lot of details. Now again, I'm going to use the uh, three color mix node and I'm going to use this texture as the mix. 
and this color will go to the color 2 for color 1 I'm going to drop a uh, RGB curve and I'm gonna lower the uh, color like that and perhaps increase the blue a little and for the color 3 I'm going to increase the brightness of the rock and for the blue channel let's get rid of the keys and uh, maybe increase the red and green a little just a little so we have something like this let's just go to back to the geometry node and turn on the uh, smooth shading I mean the shade smooth so that we can clearly see the effect of the uh, the textures and uh, let's take a closer look as you can see these lines are kind of too straight so I want to break up these lines a little so I'm going to warp the, the texture coordinate a little using the space warp node and let's set this to 1 increase the scale nah too much let's set this to 2 and decrease the scale to uh, 1 or 1.5 and play a bit with the scale and as you can see the the edges kind of curve around a little which is good and finally let's create a simple bump for the rock just use this texture as the bump for the rock and there we go now the bump is a little too weak so we need to increase the uh, strength of the bump a little we have not set the camera so the next thing we want to do is to set the camera All right. So I'm going to find a view that looks good and I'm gonna just place the camera around here. Now this landscape is a little too big and the camera is uh, not viewing it correctly. We need to tweak this a little. We're gonna need to set this to uh, let's say 5000 and this is gonna be 1. And let me just crop the uh, render and the focal length let's say 25. Let me just adjust the camera position some more. I don't want the way the sun is directly shining on top of the water and uh, reflect onto the camera. So I'm going to change the uh, sun direction a little. Let me go back here and uh, increase the uh, resolution and see how it looks. Let's say 0.5. Alright, this is the 1K by 1K. And let me just unlock the camera. Let's get back to the camera and uh, as you can see the camera is too small for the scale of this entire landscape. So let's go to the viewport display of the camera and increase this to 100 meters. And the viewport is a little weird so we need to tweak this to uh, 10,000 by 0.1. Alright, 